Hello children, it is an honor to be with you and since we can't do a, a proper tour of the church in, in these days, we have decided to, to give you some videos uh, to tour the church to get to know more about what is here, especially as we begin today, we're going to talk about the altar. We have the altar here in the center of the church. And in the center of the sanctuary, it's the, the central focus from all of the points of the, the church. And this is where our, our attention is focused when we come to Mass. Everything focuses here and what happens on the altar. Here we have the altar. It is made of wood. And as you can see, it's, it's dark wood. It's solid. It's nice and big. The altar reminds us of the table on which Jesus celebrated the Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist with his apostles. This altar was made in 1994 when the church was renovated and they incorporated into the altar a piece or some pieces of the old marble altar that used to be on the back wall. Here we have uh, the marble in each corner and in the very center, remembering the old altar that used to be on the back wall. Uh, here we have the altar clock. This is the clock that we put over the top of the altar. It's white, it's pure, it reminds us of this pure and beautiful sacrifice that we are offering here. It also reminds us of, of our white baptismal garment as the altar is covered with white, so we are covered with white clothes with Christ at our baptism. And this altar cloth was made by the Vietnamese sisters, the lovers of the Holy Cross. As some of you may know, Sister Maria, she works at the parish and at the school. Sister Maria has some sisters in Las Vegas who make beautiful altar cloths and vestments for the priest. And so the Vietnamese sisters, the lovers of the Holy Cross, made this altar cloth for us. And then we have on the altar here, these candlesticks. You can see the candlesticks that we have lit here. And the candlesticks are made of brass. They were a gift to us from Father Louis Cunningham, who grew up at St. Anthony Parish, who went to St. Anthony School. And when he was ordained a priest, he gave us this set of altar candles and the altar cross. Right now we have two candles on the altar. We usually have a minimum of two candles when we celebrate Mass for the daily Mass. On Sunday, we have six candles. And if the Archbishop is here, we can have seven candles. We use the candles to remind us of the light of Christ that illuminates the darkness and in the old days they didn't have electricity and so the priest needed the candles to be able to see the text that was in the Roman Missal so he could read as he is celebrating the Mass. And here we have our altar cross. Like I said this was a gift to us from Father Louis Cunningham. And this is the cross that the priest looks at when celebrating the Eucharist. As you are all looking to the large crucifix above the altar, and since we're not facing the same way, the priest looks at this crucifix to remember the sacrifice of Christ that he gave his life for us uh, on the cross. And it's from this sacrifice that we receive the precious body and blood of our Lord here on this altar. So now we'll go to the other side of the altar. And 
here we have everything set up like we would at a, at a daily mass or a mass on Sunday. We have the Roman Missal. This is the book that has all the prayers that we need to celebrate the mass. And, um, and we have it on a beautiful book stand that we use to hold it up so that the priest can read it more easily. Everything we put on the altar is decorated and, and beautiful, as you can see. Over here, we have our, our cruets that we use for Mass. The cruet with the wine, the cruet with the water, and the bowl that we use for the washing of the hands with the water, and the little towel that we use to dry our hands after we wash our hands ready for the Eucharist. This is the chalice. And above the chalice, we have set the corporal. The corporal we use to put down on the altar, on the place where we will consecrate the bread and the wine. So the corporal we open up onto the altar. This signifies the place where the bread will become the body of Christ and the wine will become the blood of Christ. And it's also here to catch any particles. If any particles fall from the host or the blood of Christ is dripped, the corporal is here to catch it. And then we place the chalice in the middle of the corporal and we remove the pall. This is the pall that we use to cover up the chalice. This is the paten, the gold paten that holds the host. And as you can see, the, the host that we use on the paten for the priest has a, a beautiful design of the holy name of Jesus. And we place the paten in front there. And this is the purificator, a purificator we use to wipe the chalice of the precious blood and to purify it after we have finished celebrating the Eucharist. And this is one of my chalices. As you can see, it's beautifully decorated. It's made of gold. We only use precious metals to uh, make the paten and the chalice either gold or silver. And as you can see, this design, I got it in Mexico. And when I walked past the store, this was in the window and it was shining brightly. It caught my eye for many reasons. I love the, the design. It looks like a flower, a beautiful flower. And we can see a detail here that most people don't get to see. On the bottom of the chalice, you can even see how they designed it to look like a flower opening up. And, and it's inside that flower that the precious blood is made present, that the, the precious blood is consecrated. And then outside, this is the detail that I perhaps love the best on this chalice. It's the crown of thorns. It reminds us of, of the pain that, that Jesus endured, of his passion and suffering as he offered his life for us and gave us his body and blood. A few more details that, that remind us of the Passion. We have here the cross with the, with the cloth that we usually use for the symbol of the resurrection. That after Jesus died on the cross, he was raised from the dead. And so on Easter, usually you put that cloth over the, the cross to remind us of the cloth that covered Jesus when he was buried and that he has risen from the dead. On this side, we have the, the nails that were used to nail Jesus's hands and feet to the cross. 
On this side we have the dice. You might think that's strange, but there was the dice that the soldiers used to cast lots so that they could take Jesus' cloak. And here we have the ladder that was used to uh, get Jesus down from the cross. And here we have the spear and the sponge the spear that was used to pierce Jesus' side on the cross, and the sponge that was used to give him the vinegar to, to quench his thirst on the cross. And this is the pall that we use as we place it on the, the chalice. It, it makes sure that nothing will come into the, the chalice as we consecrate it, um, as sometimes, there, especially in the summertime, there might be flies or other things going around, so we make sure that nothing could enter into the precious blood and we cover it up with the paw. Thank you very much for joining us for this short tour of the altar of St. Anthony.